Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Click PLC PID instruction and auto tuning using Factory I.O. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. This includes all the links to download the PLC software as well as the scene from Factory I.O. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen I have my factory I.O. and under file you will see the drivers and the drivers themselves were actually connected currently and we're connected to this slave unit here and if we look at the configuration you'll see that there's my host number which is coming from my PLC, my click PLC with the Ethernet. You'll see my I.O. configuration input and output and my I.O. points and my registers. So that's our driver for our factory I.O. And you can see here that we are connected Modbus TCP IP to the Click PLC. And this is my, my PLC right here. You can see my Ethernet link right here. So we're connected back to this physical PLC that's controlling our level in our scene, which is our tank that we see on our display here. So that is our setup. Now if we look at the um, the Click PLC itself, we're actually using the um, PID instruction within the controller to control that level in that tank. So if we look at our setup here, you'll see that this is version uh, 2.50, which is the latest version of the Click, which includes the PID instruction. So what we do is we can right click and we can hit delete or we can just double click on that PID instruction and we get up, we get our information here of our configuration mode. And in the general tab, what we do is we set up the PID parameters that we want to use within the program. So we're using uh, everything starting at an offset of 100. So C100, DS100 and DF100. These are actually used within the PID to operate. And then we can change the PID name if we want. Our set point, we can actually choose an upper limit and lower limit. In our case, we're using 0 and 1000 as the limit for our set point of our factory I.O. And that is the, exactly what our um, limit will be on that control valve as well. So 0 to 1000. Our error term, we're actually using an error squared, which is on. What you'll notice is that as it crosses zero, it doesn't extend past that, so it contains the error a little bit narrower. Then we have a dead band, we're gonna leave that off. Our loop algorithm, you can see our proportional integral and derivative gain here, and our sample rate, 100 milliseconds. Uh, we have a freeze bias selected, uh, so it's anti-windup. We also have our bumpless transfer as our forces bias our, our forces bias is equal to our control output if with if the bumpless transfer is on, so when we go from manual to auto and back again. We also have a reverse action selected. So then our output, we have um, our upper limit and lower limit, and this is in percentage. So what we're doing is we're gonna limit our output to uh, uh, the 25% right now. So that way we're not going to get a big uh, response as we um, auto-tune this uh, device. Then we have our process variable. You can see that we can have our raw data coming in and we can put through a filter and our filter right now is set to 100 which is actually no filtering at all. So we could have selected this no filter but I just wanted to show you that we have a filter and it works re reverse. So 100% uh, would be uh, no filtering and then you can filter it down. And if you use zero, then there'll be no filtering at all, which means you won't be looking at anything. And then we have alarm features. And in the alarm features, we can set um, high alarms, low alarms. Um, so we can do a lot of those alarming automatically within this instruction and we can just pick them up in our program. So that is our um, PID configuration. Then once we're done, 
we can actually read those registers and then we can write those registers into the PLC. Now this must be, um, we're actually online with our controller right now. So I said, okay. And this is our program itself. We have our start from our factory IO and we can actually view that. We have our factory IO running and it's not stopped. So we're actually solving our logic. We have our indication lights on our factory IO panel and we have a start light currently on. Then we don't have a stop light. Then what we have is um, we have our move our set value data. So if we have our turn um, pot, we can see that um, as we turn our pot, it sets our set point DS6, which is part of our factory IO. And then our factory IO meter position, we have our level sensor goes into our present value sensor. So as the level of the tank increases and decreases, the present value of our meter is actually changing. Then what we do is we um, move our set point value into the PID loop parameters. So DF111 is our process uh, variable input. And so we move our set point into that process uh, variable. Now, when we set up our PID loop in our instruction, all of our tags are then uh, automatically labeled for us. Then we have our um, present value goes into our, our DS7. We'll go into our process data here. So set point and then our present value data goes in. Then what we have is we can do a little bit of math. So we, we're getting a percentage of our output, zero to 100%. And what we're doing is multiplying it by 10. And then we're actually setting our fill valve. So whatever that value is, we multiply it by 10 to get us zero to 1000, indicating zero to 100% on our output fill valve. Then we have our bits that actually turn or enable our um, auto and our manual modes. So once we turn this on, it automatically will uh, take the leading edge of C1. It will make sure that we're not already in auto mode and it sets our auto mode for us as a one shot. And then when C1 turns off, it makes sure that we're not in manual mode and it will set our manual mode as a one shot. So it energizes that um, bit and then it so that we're in actual manual mode. So once we have all that set, we can actually look up our PID monitoring. And this will aid us in looking at the actual instruction itself. You can see here now, our set point is set for 513. Our present value is 513. And our raw data is 513. So we're right on set point right now. You can see my output is, is 17.5006%. And you can see my output range 0 to 35. So everything seems to be working just uh, fine, nice and steady. So let's uh, again call up a factory I.O. here. And we'll make that a little smaller. So we can see our looping here. And what we'll do is first of all, let's call up our panel. And we're going to hit stop. So what this will do is put us into our uh, manual mode and you can see that here it automatically switched to our manual mode and everything seems to be running fine still. And what we'll do is we'll do an auto tune on this uh, unit. So let's just go a little bit more of our set point and let's, uh, let's take this up to 500, 556. Okay, that'll be our new set point. Okay, so 556. And what we'll do is we will change now our P parameter to 0 0.1. Our I will set to 1000. And these are the default values that you'll see in the help menu. Our D will be set to zero and our sample rate will turn to 300 milliseconds. 
So when we hit write, it'll write these values into our controller. There we go. And now we look at our factory I.O. So that's our parameters right now. And what we'll do is we will actually start this. And when we start it, we will actually go auto tune. And what it's doing right now, it is auto tuning our control loop. And what you'll see is it go above the set point, then it will turn it off, it'll go below the set point, turn it back on again. And then once it does those uh, two loops, it actually then sets our PID parameter. So now our PID parameter has now been auto-tuned. And here we go. We're back on set point once again. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our two free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.